Are you considering using city or tap water for outdoor cannabis production? This Debaco University video will provide you with some good information as far as what you should be looking for and be aware of when using this type of water source. All right, let's get into using city or tap water for outdoor cannabis production. Well, first off, you need to test the base water. No matter what the source you're using, you need to have an idea what the base source has for a starting point. This can include the parts per million, the AC, the pH, the temperature, and which all can be very easily determined with a quality water meter. Specifics for city water, though, include what type of antimicrobial is being potentially added to that water. So chlorine, fluorine, chloramide, or other. Definitely things to be uh, considerate of when you're talking about city or tap water, also sometimes called drinking water, and there's some tests available here that we can see. Now, why is chlorine used? So it's a very common additive added to city or tap water. Chlorine is a cheap disinfectant that is effective at removing microorganisms, infections, protozoans uh, that can develop in the water supply. So this is why it's added in, in this for these purposes. It's a good thing that it's added. We want to be mindful of this if we're looking at irrigating plants or potentially using uh, supp a supportive microbe environment. So the change from chlorine to chloramine. This is something that's being used in a lot of other a lot of towns. So it's important to understand if your municipality is making this change or has made this change. A chloramine is more stable, although it is a weaker disinfectant than chlorine. Chloramine is ammonia added to drinking water uh, containing chlorine. You can see a picture of that kind of molecule right here. As a result, this does stay in the water much longer for a much longer duration of time than chlorine. Chloramine levels of up to four milligrams per liter um, or four part per million are safe for drinking. Uh, so just be aware that there are safe levels of this particular um, kind of additive that's being put into many of the drinking water supplies. Now if we're filtering chlorine, uh, this goes back to chlorine, we're typically looking at what's called an activated carbon filter. And these carbon filters are some of the most effective tools at reducing chlorine content from water. They're also common in households since these filters can also improve the general taste and odor associated uh, with chlorine. That's, people just tend not to like to drink that. Now the most common type of carbon filter is actually a activated carbon filter, which we see here. And this effectively uh, reduces and also filters many contaminants and unwanted components from the water. And this is why they are so commonly seen. Now we have filtering uh, chlorine with uh, catalytic uh, carbon, so a different kind of process. Uh, this is less common, it is a more advanced form of carbon filtration. This is called catalytic activated carbon filtration. This uh, process has a higher capacity for chlorine reduction and can effectively reduce chloramines as well. So keep in mind that just because, oh, it's a carbon filter, we should try to find out a little bit more of the specifics. And this is why one may cost more than another. And we're filtering out that chlorine again, uh, focusing on that in particular. Uh, a lot of people will use a fa faucet mounted uh, flur filtration systems. And this is an activated charcoal filter to treat tap water. These are not advised simply because they're small size and rate which the water is emitted. That water typically will mean it's, it's restricted in a way that will not allow sufficient irrigation to plants, particularly on a, uh, even a mid-sized scale. Both due to these factors, it means the less chlorine is filtered out uh, than with an activated carbon filter used in more uh, kind of comprehensive and large filters. So keep in mind not only will the flow rate be reduced, but because these are so small, the amount of chlorine they're removing is also reduced, which kind of negates the point you're trying to do. Now, filtering out chl chloramine, we talked about earlier, this filtration technique is um, expensive versus the ones we had just heard about here for chlorine. To remove chloramine, you need an expensive carbon filter to remove the chlorine included in the chloramine molecule. Then you want to utilize ideally reverse osmosis or a cation filter. This will remove the ammonia content within the water. And we can see here more complex, more components, uh, potentially longer duration of time to filter, um, so in more moving parts or more components to be considering changing out or hopefully not having any leaky fittings. 
Now, a lot of growers will combine uh, and use multiple systems. So while the overall flow rate of water may be reduced combining multiple systems, this can help ensure all particul particulate chemicals and organisms are removed. This often is utilized with a storage tank of some kind simply because the flow rate is often too slow to be used for irrigation directly. Be sure this system is sized or potentially oversized for your current operation to ensure there's enough water for the plants and oversizing it will allow you the chance to potentially grow more plants or just have more water on hand. And we can just see a mock example here of a water softener, carbon takes, an RO system, and then a storage tank kind of all utilized in the same area. So it's important to keep in mind that there can be a lot of components, but a lot of this depends on what your starting water uh, actually has. So doing that initial test is very important because it will help direct you as far as what system you might want to consider utilizing for your plants.